Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for asking me to present this uh, Cochrane systematic review. Um, the title of the review that I'm going to talk about today is uh, Do We Need to Perform Urodynamic Studies Before Surgery for Urinary Incontinence in Women? So, what were the aims of our uh, systematic review? We aim to determine whether urodynamic studies altered management plans for women with urinary incontinence in terms of use of drugs or surgery. And then subsequently, we aim to, uh, we aim to determine whether uh, this actually improved clinical outcomes for women with urinary incontinence. So why ask these questions? Urodynamics is an invasive and embarrassing investigation. It does have associated adverse effects, uh, such as urinary tract infection, with a prevalence between 3 to 20 per cent in another recent Cochrane systematic review. Um, and it is an, relatively expensive um, compared to the other options of diagnosis. In the UK, it costs roughly £340 for a single outpatient procedure. So, the methods. Um, we use Cochrane standard methodology um, and included RCTs only. Our inclusion criteria were patients with urinary incontinence who in one arm of the trial um, underwent urodynamic studies. The comparator arm could be any other form of clinical diagnosis. And the, one of the main outcomes was change in management um, of these patients, uh, with the primary outcome being urinary incontinence, incontinence at 12 months, and that was a subjective measure. So the results. We screened 229 reports in total, um, and eight RCTs met our inclusion criteria. This gave data um, for 1,036 women in seven trials, um, at 526 of whom received urodynamics. Um, this is just an assessment of the risk of bias in our trials. The green dots indicating a low risk, yellow indicating an unclear risk, and red indicating a high risk. Um, and I'd like to draw your attention to the first two, um, first two sections there, which is random sequence generation and allocation concealment, which obviously make up the randomised part of the trial. And as you can see, it's green for most of the trials. The yellow dots usually can, um, indicating that there wasn't enough information to uh, make a judgment. So, change in management. I'll talk you through the geography as a slide. Um, the outcome that I'll speak about first is the change in management. The uh, studies, three studies on the left there, and the next two columns indicate the women who underwent urodynamics in the trial, and the next two columns to the right there indicate the women who were in the comparator arm. The uh, black diamond indicates the summary statistic. So, as you can see, women who underwent urodynamics were five times more likely to have their management changed than um, women who didn't undergo a year dynamics, and this was a statistically significant result, although the um, conference centre was are quite wide. Um, so what did this change in management actually consist of? Well, women who underwent urodynamics were um, more likely to be prescribed drugs for their incontinence, um, and again, this is a statistically significant result. Um, however, interestingly, they weren't more likely to undergo surgery, with the uh, summary statistic being 0.99 um, for the risk ratio. Um, the, uh, the confidence intervals are um, relatively wide, plus or minus 12 per cent, but like I said, the summary statistic is um, nearly on the line of no effect. So, our primary outcome, in at 12 months. Again, there was no difference between women who underwent urodynamics and those who didn't, um, with the risk ratio being 1.02. Again, relatively wide confidence intervals was 0.86 to 1.21, so minus 14 to plus 21 per cent. Um, but the summary statistic is nearly on the line of no effect again. So in conclusion, Eurodynamics does appear to change management decisions, um, possibly leading to additional drug prescribing for the treatment. Um, but how there was no evidence of a statistically significant difference in surgery rates, and possibly as a consequence of this, there was no evidence of a statistically significant reduction in incontinence rates at one year. And we calculated that 100 women would have to go under Eurodynamics to prevent women, one woman being incontinent at one year. These are the affiliations I would like to disclose. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge um, the ICS Travel Award Committee for funding myself to attend this conference. Sheila Wallace, our trial search coordinator for the Cochrane Incontinence Group um, for aiding with the search strategy. And the UK NIHR is the largest single funder of the Cochrane Incontinence Review Group. Thank you very much.